All right. Uh, welcome. We've got uh, Jay Ashman here today with us from Kansas City Barbell. And a big reason that I wanted to talk to you is uh, uh, you, as a gym owner, have gone through this this experience with the, with the closures related to pan- the pandemic and all of that and have continued forward in, in like putting a new investment into your gym, changing locations, you know, keeping it, the path that you had set before all this happened. Uh, that's a very optimistic point of view because like a lot of gyms, every, every, everybody doesn't know what the hell's going to happen afterwards and how they're going to try to keep people safe and liability and whether people will actually show up. Um, all those big being big concerns. Gold's gym is in bankruptcy nordstrom's closing down left Nord- and right. yeah nordstrom's actually closed here locally um that's, that's funny we're building a new nordstrom out by us which is funny it's actually in the middle of construction right now that's funny yours closes down ours is actually going to be opening yeah. yeah there's a bunch of like polarizing things like that here too our city was on fire beforehand uh, buildings everywhere we just uh, secured a professional soccer team we're building uh new hotels and uh, I think I guess it's good. While while traffic and stuff was low, they're doing tons of repairs on like uh, street side uh, mm-hmm. lights. Um, this hotel basically ex- like was built during this time. Like yeah. it was framework, and now it looks like it's almost functioning. But then on the opposite end, yeah, like our main mall, I don't know how it's gonna make it. Yeah, I don't know either. Like things in the suburbs are trash. Yeah, um, yeah mall, malls are pretty much a dead topic anyway. I mean, the malls here are just yeah. <laughs> Those towns, they were even before the pandemic. I mean, nobody shops at a mall anymore. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. You you would think some of this might just fast forward what what was yeah. going to happen anyways, right? Like uh, on the gym topic, you know, I've, I've been to a 24-hour fitness, um, you know, commercial style gym on and off my whole life. Um, I went to one in high school a bunch and nothing. One squat rack and it was like that pyramid style with secured uh, J hooks, right? Mm-hmm. Super uncomfortable. The safety racks are there and you can't even squat the depth or the bar is going to hit it. Fast forward right. like six years, I go to that same gym while I'm visiting my mom and there's a whole basically like quote unquote CrossFit setup, right? There's Aleco plates and Aleco barbells mm-hmm. and big rig. Obviously they're yeah. taking, you know, cues from what's happening in the fitness world, kind of our world. Um, this might fast forward that too. Those things might just be gone and it might be more gyms like, you know, Casey Barbell running around. Yeah. So what, how long has your gym been in business and what has your sort of clientele and experience been like? Well, it's been uh, open a little over two years at this point. And uh, the clientele, we're essentially a strength focused gym first and foremost. Mm. Everything we do is about getting stronger. I mean, I reiterate that people come people in, come in, come in, come in, come in, like that, 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 strength, that, strength, that. strength first. And it's a hundred percent coaching based. So there is no open gym. You don't walk into our gym and bring your program with you. You don't hire a coach somewhere else. Like I'm kind of a, I'm kind of arrogant about my coaching. I'm good at what I do and I know it. So this is my brand. This is my gym. You get me or my partners to coach you or go somewhere else. Simple as that. And you'll pay for that here, but you'll come out stronger, better, faster, and definitely coach the right way. That's our main focus and it's worked. So we have a higher price point than any gym in the area. With the exception of maybe a few CrossFit gyms in the suburbs, I think, but we're probably one of the most, we're probably one of the highest price gyms in the area. But it works for us because we definitely emphasize the quality rather than the quantity. And that's our business model from day one. Plus we're very inclusive. We don't, I mean, as you know, Jim, the strength world is filled with certain people who aren't very accepting. Yep. So, I mean, I'm not going to go on my list and lay, label things off. But, Just you know, name them. Just about. name them. Fuck it. <laughs> but, you know, so we are the exact opposite of that. We don't give a shit what you are. You know, our main purpose, everybody can get stronger. If you start with a barbell on your back or start with 500 pounds on your back, your main goal is improve the best way you can. And we definitely make you feel welcome here with that. When we have members who are transgender, you know, all different nationalities, sexualities, you know, backgrounds. We have chief engineer, we have CEOs, and we have iron workers. And the only rule is you come in here and you just do your thing, get along with each other, leave your politics at the door, don't bring them in here, don't act like an idiot, don't disrespect anybody, and you'll be fine. That's cool. 
That's cool. Thinking of the, about the business model, what kind of led you to want to do that? Is it one, you just really like coaching people? Obviously, you believe in yourself and it's something you have a passion for. Is it um, pure business? Do you think that's the best business model for the setup you wanted to have? Um, is there something else that went into it? You had just had so many clients? Because I think the typical progression for most people, right. uh, and I don't, I don't know that much of your history, but most people are some kind of trainer somewhere, whether it's a commercial gym yeah. or a studio. Then you get a bunch of clientele, and you're like, well, I know I'd make a lot mo more money if I opened my own place, et cetera, et cetera, um, mm. or, or classes, cool. right? Um, so what, what led you to want to have a higher price point but be so hands-on? Because commercial gyms to me are a dying business. And I don't mean that they're always going to exist, but you won't get quality at most commercial gyms. You know, Equinox might be an exception to the rule because of their education for trainers. But I work at Equinox back in New York City. I know how they work. You know, but for me, doing what I do in a regular commercial gym is kind of a hard sell. People that go to like a regular gym, you know, want to look pretty and be fitnessy. You know, that's all well and good, but I'm really, I like getting people strong. So, my model needs to have is dedicated facility. And then you go into most other powerlifting type gyms and lifters are cheap. You know, <laughs> the elite lift, the, the elite lifters of the world don't want to spend money on themselves, it seems like. Yeah. They just, so it's like, what can we do to bring my kind of training at everybody else and say, well, we have no choice but to make the environment more inclusive rather than just saying, hey, we don't care who you are, just come in. So for me, it's a natural progression because yeah, I like coaching. B, I'm good at it. C, the coaching model of making people feel like they're getting value for their money and treating them like a member of a community rather than just a number. You know, and when you that way, when they come into your gym, they know what they have to do. Because most people who work in the real world don't want to sit online for 10 hours a day finding a program. Yeah. You know, True. they want to come into a gym either hire a trainer or do what works and get out of here. You know, it's just the nature of the beast. Like I won't, you know, build my own house. I'll hire a carpenter. Same principle with what we do. So do you think that, that approaching it like this, um, increases the like member loyalty, brand loyalty to you and make, makes it more likely that people are going to come back after the pandemic and, and, um, feel comfortable in the space and, and feel like, you know, they're safe. Yes, definitely. I mean, we, we've lost, one members we lost right now are the ones who got laid off or furloughed from work and they'll be, they'll be back. Mm -hmm. And I do understand that, you know, hundred percent. And uh, our members have stayed for the most part and they're excited to come back. And they've been, you know, we've been keeping touch with them, keeping in touch with them during the months that we were closed and a month, whatever it was. You know, helping them out with uh, online workouts, you know, sending tips and tricks and videos and all that are fun stuff, keeping them engaged. I gave out a bunch of free workouts to them. Well, not really free, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, have a lot of them do my nutrition coaching right now. So we really foster that sense of this is a lifestyle more than a goal. And the brand loyalty we have is definitely pretty intense because we offer a more personalized service than, you know, any gym in the area. I mean, aside from a CrossFit gym, which is the nature of their gym is very community based. So I guess you could say without sounding like too much of like an idiot here, we're kind of like the CrossFit of lifting gyms where we really push community over anything else. What's, um, what's the thought process on scaling upwards? So, uh, I think you moved into a new facility. I imagine it's just, uh, bigger. Um, yes. but, but what are other ways? Like, are, are you looking to expand your coaching? Uh, most people obviously go from in person to online to scale things, mm -hmm. or they move into another category or in training talk, people do, you know, you can, you, you only have so many hours in the day. So if you're training one yes. person for every single hour, do you start to do groups of five? Do you start to do groups of 20 and then you end up, you know, doing strength classes? Um, What's your thought process and maybe uh, what route do you see, you know, your your things moving? Well, now we move into, our facility right now is double the space. It's 3,500 square feet. We moved from 1,500. So we more than doubled it. So we're able to put in dedicated weightlifting platforms, some more stuff. We have a belt squat coming, all that kind of shit. We have a turf right now, turf area, which is kind of cool. So, you know, my guy, I made my bones training athletes, you know, because I played Super League rugby for a long time. So I'm really good with sports training. So now I can actually implement a strength and conditioning program. And just a couple hours ago, four lacrosse kids came in from a local school 
one of our members is a lacrosse coach and he's pushing our program on the lacrosse kids. So they're gonna join up for strength and conditioning. So our scaling is more or less based around getting the kids in the local high schools, uh, powerlifting teams, uh, you know, we, which do exist around here. You know, people, who kids who play sports, because we're not that far from uh, like Prairie Village and Overland Park, which is, you know, people out there are pretty well, pretty well off. Mm-hmm. You know, downtown Kansas City is kind of hit or miss, but you know, a lot of people work here or live in the burbs. People that live in the burbs bring their kids here to train. So I, as far as remote coaching, I've been working with my partners in the gym because I'm I have a pretty sizable remote coaching business. Like the gym could seriously shut down tomorrow, and I won't be hurt one bit financially. But this is what I want to do. I remote coaching is cool, but I like being in a gym. I love being in a gym. So my goal is to make sure that we can do both, that we have enough time that the guys that I work with, they know how to scale their business online. That way we can become a hybrid model. Like we have hashtag team KCBB for remote coaching, you know, KC nutrition for nutritional programming. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what we do here. And we push that upon the people here too. And so it's like, if all our members move to a different area, we can say, hey, you know, I saw you have to move. But if you want to continue using our programming, we can offer it to you at this price and we can do nutrition coaching for you too at this price and keep you moving forward. And if you find a new gym that you like, we like, we like, we like, we like, we like, we just had a big echo. That was great. I heard that. Yeah, you heard that one. Yeah. Uh, so you were saying that basically that you're um, that you can continue to offer coaching and programming for people even if they move away, so they're not yeah. in the in your facility. And you said nutrition coaching as well. Is that how comprehensive is that? Is that like is that every meal? Is it is it macro targets? Is it how does that work? Depends on the person. I mean, I do my honestly do mostly macros because it's uh, easier to work with. Yeah. But I do, I do have a few clients who hate macros and we do a meal layout where it's like, I want you to eat this much protein per meal, this many carbs per meal. And it's basically the same thing as macros, except we're breaking it down for them a little bit more individually. Mm-hmm. And not calling and it that. My, yeah. And yeah, my wife who's a clinical, who's a clinical dietitian, she's a master's in dietetics and uh, she can do people's clinical nutrition and ask to lab testing for autoimmune disorders. Mm-hmm micronutrient issues, GI disorders. So we have a comprehensive team that can work with anybody. But our specialty is pretty much performance nutrition, like getting in better shape and looking better is kind of a side effect of performing your best. How did you get started uh, to even begin with, to get to get even a, you know any facility going and people in the door? I think that's you know arguably the hardest part right i don't know if you know alan thrall yeah alan thrall untamed strength uh we talked to him like last year similar conversation and i think he said he went like six months and not a single soul walked in the door (laughs) and he would just show up every day and kind of train by himself just praying someone walk in the door you know he's just out of the the military doesn't know what to do you know just to get a spark uh a little bit of hope a little bit of money a little bit of you know uh, attention it's not like you can just go buy a billboard it's not like you can just run a you know a radio commercial right. off the rip um but uh, you know i think your model your passion for fitness and helping people is is the future of fitness uh, like you said like commercial commercial gyms just don't care and i'm a businessman i love making money and i like to optimize things and i like to yes. scale things but you know you want to believe in what you're selling and you know right. you talk to any trainer at 24 hour fitness they don't believe in shit they're just they just got their weekend certificate and now they're in there the front door person just wanted a free gym mm. membership so they're wiping down machines for a free you know no one really cares in that kind of spectrum it's purely money in and transactional um so i do think more people will likely want to open facilities like this because they're they're far and few between you know there's there's not even right. one facility like this in every city i would say yeah right now. it's definitely not um so how do you yeah how do you even just get client number one what's what's the thought process or what was your process well what i did was i had one person actually i legit had one person come in to join from when i had this idea and it was kind of funny i was like well let's be fun so I would, what I personally did was I joined I joined the Kansas City Chamber of Commerce about six to eight months out before I found a building. And it's just on the bucks. And I went to most of the meet and greets, the Friday morning coffee meets. And I basically had a bunch of business cards made, my name and gym name on them. And uh, I would just meet people and hand them out and just say, hey, I'm opening a gym up here soon, blah, 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 you know, all that you know, happy horse shit. And they probably won't join, but they'll know somebody who might want to join. And 
the second I found a location, we found a location we we're going to be at, you know, plus I'm super extroverted as far as talking to people. Like I'm, unfortunately, most people in my industry don't, aren't very socially aware. True. <laughs> I, I have a pretty high social IQ. And I'm not going to ever lie about that. I'm really <laughs> easy to get along with in person. And, uh, so I go to every business in the area and I meet the owners, I meet the people who work there. You know, I get to know them by name. I frequent the locations. I go to the bars, I meet, the, I hang out with there. It's like the whole two mile radius around me, I probably know a good 80% of people who own places. places, 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 places. And that's, and that's, and that's you have to be a networking freaking machine. I mean, you can't be afraid to be out there because you're in a business that requires a personal interaction. Mm -hmm whether you want to believe that or not, you know, owning a gym, being a trainer, you got to be personal. You're a personable person. And if you can't sell, I always tell people, you're not really selling a gym, any asshole open, you're selling yourself. Yeah. People are going to buy from you. They're going to trust you. They're going to send your kids to you. So how can you make them trust who you are as a person? We got to talk to them. You got to let them know, Hey, this is me. This is what I do. Buy from them, you know, frequent their stores. You know, talk to them. Don't be a don't be an aloof, standoffish person. Don't walk around like you have a chip on your shoulder. You know, just be a part of the community. And for me, I kind of immerse myself in the Casey's community so deeply that it's like, and plus I'm really good at websites and building SEO stuff. That helps too. So when people search Kansas City, because Kansas City Barbell is a genius name, and nobody ever took it. I was like, holy shit, I'm buying that right away. <laughs> yeah, I'm I like, think it fucking makes sense because Kansas City has a very, very brand, very huge brand loyalty itself. Right. So people search Kansas City powerlifting, number one SEO is me. Yeah. Yeah. That helps a lot. I think the point you hit is so huge. Like the regular consumer and even the, the nerdy power lifter is very unlikely to choose a gym that has this squat rack versus this squat rack. Like they just don't know and they don't care. They're 100% right. choosing based on the person that's greeting them at the door. If the place is kind of clean, if the music isn't, you know, obnoxious or if it hit, hits a vibe or if they walk in and they feel something like there's, it's all a kind of the untouchables that's actually doing the selling. Uh, my dad was right. a salesman by profession and, and he sold like normal stuff, like marketing stuff, you know, kind of SEO type stuff for AT&T. Mm -hmm. And hey, I mean, did he didn't know anything about any of that, but he was so easy to get along with. Like he sold a shit ton of stuff. Like it's that simple. If you believe in the person, you're likely going to believe in their product. Yeah. Well, we were talking to, to Matt Reynolds last week and he said that like when they hire coaches, a lot of it, it they're, they're hiring for his personality that they can teach the other part of it as long as they have the, <laughs> the passion for, for, uh, communication yeah. with other people. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be, it's gotta be there. Yeah. Let's not, I still want to get back into the gym stuff, but let's get real with, with what people want to hear. <laughs> Texas barbecue or Kansas city barbecue. We'll be right back with the answer to that very crucial barbecue question right after this conversation that Mike and I recently had on the phone about Thrive Market. We don't usually do it this way. This is weird, like talking on... Yeah, we're face-to-face. -face. Face to, yeah, we're normally face-to-face. -face. Well, what if I told you that you could get a high quality, get high quality organic and non-GMO groceries delivered to your door for a lot less than you're paying right now and help out families in need? That's why I've been doing Thrive Market. They sent us, you know, codes and I screwed it up and you should already have one, but I misspelled your email address. It's no food for me. No food for you. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, now as a proud Thrive Market member, I can get the products I love and my paid membership provides a free one for someone in need, like a low income family, a teacher, a veteran, a first responder. Uh, a thing that I love about this uh, particular uh, website is the way that it's organized. Like if you have a particular dietary thing that you're you're targeting, like you're keto, you're just doing plant based stuff, or whatever you're doing, you put that in it, and it just it shows you all of the options, all the products that are available in that that meet that criteria. It's kind of like you know that scene in the Matrix where they're where they're loading up on guns yeah, and yeah, they yeah. like say it's it and they're like. Holofast. All this stuff just goes in and yeah, like it's like that kind of. As a member, I'm saving 25% off of traditional retail prices and their carbon neutral shipping is free for orders over $49. And my wife has been very much into the 
carbon neutral thing lately. Uh, in fact, uh, her her last trip to Canada that she didn't get to take because of COVID, uh, we actually paid the extra for the carbon offsets for that flight. Oh, that's dope. I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, yeah, apparently you can now. Okay, so yeah, I feel really good about that. And I also feel uh, good about getting a great deal on my favorite clean organic products. Uh, Thrive Market is matching donations to their COVID-19 relief fund dollar for dollar, which is cool. Nobody else is. I'm, I don't know anybody else is doing that. I, I don't know any, any delivery service. I know that you, I interrupted your gaming session, your uh, your Twitch session for uh, for this conversation. I was freaking out anyways. Raging. You were raging? Yeah. I'm just getting too old, I think. My reaction time's too slow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start to play chess or something instead. There you go, but hey, you don't really. You can order this stuff and have it come while you're while you're gaming, while you're streaming to Twitch. Yeah, that's what I need to be honest, because I uh, I can't prep. I don't want to go to the stores. No one wants to go to the stores right now. So if you can get things delivered, uh, and we got you guys all hooked up. So if you want to try Thrive Market, you can become a member absolutely risk free. You just got to go to thrivemarket.com slash facts. That's F A C T S. Join today. You'll get up to twenty dollars in shipping credits shopping credits excuse me towards your first order that's thrive t-h-r-i-v-e market.com slash facts f-a-c-t-s again you'll get twenty dollars absolutely risk-free you can try it out towards your membership get up twenty dollars for your first order thrive market.com slash facts you know what i mean i'm from east coast so i honestly have no real skin in this fight okay fair but i will say i like them both okay you know Texas is uh, a different style, obviously. So I'm going to say Kansas City because I live here. I don't like it fucking rich. <laughs> but uh, no, well, honestly, Kansas City burn ends. Burn ends. Burn ends. Burn ends. So it's really hard. I mean, I kind of say they're both kind of tied, honestly. Okay, fair. Okay, so you say Kansas City burnt ends are, are what good? What we know for yeah i don't know why barbecue hasn't like been translated to the coasts that well like we have some barbecue spots that are pretty good but it's not that common and it's not like texas or anything no and, and the other coast is the same like you go to boston like you're not going getting barbecue but like those are like the those cities are more like culturally diverse so why w why wouldn't we spread our own culture there and they're always a little i mean the good places are always little hole in wall places not yeah. you know yeah. not chains or anything like that and you and you well, have to barbecue places here that are just dude you walk into it's like what the fuck <laughs> i mean oklahoma joe's for example is a gas station the yeah yeah one that anthony bourdain loves that's a gas station uh L LC's barbecue is a goddamn shack. I mean, you're walking in. It looks like it's. It looks like it should be shut down. But they have some of the best barbecue in the city. And places like that, you go in. I mean, like Texas, is the same way. You walk into some of the good ones. It's like rows of picnic tables, and a smoker the size of a house. And it's like, all right, well, this is cool. Yeah, I need to make enough money to go find one of those dudes, and just bring them out here and open a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, you know, Seriously. like that would kill it. Yeah, uh, you yeah, yeah you think yeah, you, but then you get down to scale again though because yeah, well, I'll just find a shack. Yeah, just find a shack. A truck. We have a sandwich place in just in this neighborhood called the Shack, by the way, which is totally a shack. That's a good name. <laughs> they are the best places, for sure. Um, so you said you 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 played rugby. Like, what was your your first lifting experience that was like oh. Okay, I get it. This is this is what I want to do. And I want to keep doing, regardless of anything else that I'm doing in my life. Oh man, I've I, I've been kind of like fortunate in this territory to lift with some pretty cool people in my life. I say the first experience I had where I can remember that was uh, the light bulb moment for me when I was training with a guy named Mark Moyer in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, where I'm from. Mark was a professional Highland Games athlete, and he was also, at that time, Steve Pochinello's a really good friend. Mm. So they both were in a pro Highland Games circuit together. And, uh, you know, it was at World Gym in uh, Exeter, Pennsylvania, which that gym right now is actually Daniel and Bailey's gym called Warhouse. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I've been. So the old Warhouse is World Gym, and there was a back room there. It was specifically, to, just specifically designed for the lifters because they didn't want us in the regular gym, regular gym floor. We had our own room in the back. 
And uh, next door was a fucking bingo hall. All you could smell was smoke. It was just gross. <laughs> but here I am training this guy, and he's teaching me all kinds of shit, you know, like how to lift. And he's a fucking massive man. And that was like a light bulb, like, dude, this is awesome. And then I actually did some pilot game stuff with these guys. You know, Steve Polchanel actually did, gave me some lessons for throwing a caber back then. And that was kind of a funny moment, too. But it was just like, a, at that point, it was, uh, this is what I could do. I kind of got hooked in the whole lifting culture. I was pretty big at that point. I gained a lot of size up at that point, but never really, never really trained like these guys trained until I met Mark. And that was uh, that moment. The door wind. slammed in my house and I'm not sure exactly what it was but anyway <laughs> a little bit startling we all looked at each other like is it haunted a murderer I think it's the wind but um, I think it was probably the bathroom door was open um, I know you had a significant health challenge a few years ago that you have uh, come out the other side of um, how scary was that I thought I was going to die honestly I mean I just pretty much figured I was going to be it for me but you know Life goes on, obviously. It wasn't, wasn't my time yet. But it was pretty scary. I mean, going through heart failure. Hey, one second. I'm on, a, I'm on a podcast. One second. Uh, yeah, I was uh, one second here. Hey, Alan. Sure. Go outside. I'm on, on this. I didn't know he was coming in. So, Are you, but, at, the, uh, are you at the gym right now? Yeah. How dope. I'm at the gym right now. So uh, I went through AFib and heart failure, and it was uh, – you know, kind of seeing your own mortality flash in front of you was a little bit rough, you know, and uh, going through that and, you know, hearing you're in heart failure, you have a 30% ejection fraction and blah, 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 and you're on basically eight different medications for a while. You know, it's kind of, you feel like you're 75 years old because you're mm -hmm. like, am I going to get any better from this? And you have that fatalistic viewpoint in your head where you don't know if you can get any healthier. And it's almost like a defeatist point. I had a week where I just almost wanted to give up because it was uh, the road in front of me seemed like it was so long and uh, I had to change everything about my lifestyle. You know, it was uh, basically an overnight change and it was hard to do because you get in that mindset of like push, 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 push. And then you realize, you know, I can't do that anymore. So it was tough. I mean, I came out of it fine, obviously, but for a few weeks it was, uh, it was definitely a struggle. There's, um, you know, like uh, invincibility complex or something everyone talks about in teenagers, but I think that lasts a lot longer than just teenagers. Oh, like yeah, For sure. Until you've gone through some shit or seen some shit, um, which a lot of people don't, honestly. I don't think you can really have perspective on what we're doing on this little revolving planet. Um, how, how did that change your perspective on, like, day-to-day -day stuff or even long-term stuff? You know, because... Because then on the opposite end, we we're already talking shit on everyone in fitness and how everybody sucks. <laughs> but it, like, it's not like I, you know, I'm a motivated guy and I'm highly driven and almost neurotic in some senses where I just can't turn off. But I'm not up at three o'clock in the morning going for a jog, you know, like my brain just works a little wired a little differently. Um, did that light a fire under you? Like, cause you hear these stories, um, and I've gone, I've seen more death than I can count on my two hands. Um, right. but, uh, but it doesn't like, and, and it gives me perspective on loving a little harder. And I think living mm -hmm. a little harder, but it's not like I wake up like I'm Rocky Balboa every morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, how did it change your perspective on day to day or, or maybe what you want to do or see in, in the years to come? So it gave me a little bit more perspective of balancing my life out more as far as I mean I still train pretty goddamn hard it's just uh how to dial it back and listen to my body a little bit differently how not to push when I know I shouldn't push you know how to right I need to eat healthier and drop some extra weight you know I'm like 222 right now when that happened I was like 275 so it was all these different variables came into play where you know, the history of my family with hypertension, having to get that in check, mm -hmm. you know, stopping taking, you know, the higher dosage of TRT plus and getting more of a sensible dose of TRT. Uh, Is TRT more plus cardio, a thing? Doing cardio, doing hiking. Is TRT like plus a thing? 
Uh, it's a thing yeah. you do yourself. Yeah. Oh, all right. I didn't know if that was a <laughs> secret <laughs> term. Yeah. No. Basically, you, when you see people like, oh, no, I'm, I'm doing TRT, but a little extra. It's basically they don't want to admit they're actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just yeah. threw it in so smooth, you caught me off guard if it was a real medical thing uh, or not. Or if kind, I, of, <laughs> kind of nice way of saying I'm doing a little extra, but I'm not quite in like, you know, crazy territory yet. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. You're not trying to squat 2,000 pounds, but you're, you know, no, you're trying, trying to have like, some fun in the gym. You're trying to like squat maybe. My hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're trying to get a little, <laughs> a little um. I get it. Uh, Understandable. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I think, a whole nother conversation. We could even have a whole nother podcast and a bunch of people on is, is people talk about um, health issues. Obviously, a lot of it's genetic. A lot of it's, live. Uh, you know, how you live your life. And powerlifting has so many health benefits. Um, but if you neglect other things, you're going to be done yeah. for. And putting on mass is fun. Uh, getting really strong is fun. Squatting a fat three hour squat workout and then slamming pizza and bed and Jerry's feels great because your next session you feel really strong again, but just even having more muscle mass than your little body's supposed to have, uh, is going to put a lot of, a lot of strain on, on your heart and other still taxing. Factors. Yeah. It's very taxing. And all these dudes, you know, it's, it's cool. I mean, our whole society's fucked upside down right? and what we look up to, but you know, y y we've seen it sadly in, 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 in our industry and in our smaller circles of strength, being big is, is what everyone looks up to, to be. And that's all of our goals at some point, but at some point you have to kind of scale back because it, it only takes you so far, you know, it only takes yeah. you so far because it's going to slow you down somewhere else. There's always a counterbalance yeah. to what's going on. Yeah, definitely. No free lunch, really, when it comes down yeah. to it. It's like you can't you can't have excess in another area without having a deficit in, in, yeah. in, in a different one altogether, you know? Yeah, and I talk about it because it's been on my mind my whole life. Like, even younger, like, my grandpa had uh, congestive heart failure. My dad ended up passing away from some kind of heart issue. I don't even know what. But So it's always on my head, like, like well, it's all right. I, I work out and I ride my bike a little bit. But like, well, I'm still 225. Like, that's just not healthy. Like, it's just probably not the best situation for me long term to reach what I want to do, you know? And yeah. it's scary. It's scary. Yeah, you know, by um, <clears throat> my dad had like three brothers that died of cardiac related stuff. And he was, you know, he spent a long, a long time being very scared of, of cardiac stuff. It didn't keep him from being fat, but it, he was like, he lost a lot of sleep over it, had a lot of tests done and all this stuff. And then ultimately uh, got cancer two or three, four times and died of yeah. cancer. And there were, it, like his cardiac stuff was completely clear. You never know. Right. You never know. You have some hint that it, it's just your mortality. It's like whatever you want to, whichever mechanism you want to to ascribe it to, it's your mortality that you're thinking about. And like, yeah, you know, yeah, and maybe a well more well balanced approach probably is better, right? Like you even talked about, you're excited because you got turf in. Now you can do some sled stuff with your clients, and right. you know, more balanced approach probably would help a lot of powerlifters too. Like you, you probably have some time in you, you know, uh, five years maybe in your 20s or 30s to really push for a big squat, but. And you start pushing that. Yeah, you start pushing that thing 10, 20, 30 years. Now you're living in the glory days. In the NBA or NFL, you'd get kicked out because you're just not good enough. You're older. But in mm -hmm. our sport, you don't get kicked out. You could power lift till you, whoever you want. But if you're chasing these numbers forever, you're going to have some. Yeah, I think at some point in time, the mindset has to be are you going to chase records or chase progress? Yeah. And that comes down, that comes down to your training, too. It's like you can, always, you can always get stronger. It's just you have to know how to train smart to get stronger without putting yourself in a goddamn wheelchair. Yeah. I mean, that's, what, that's really, it's hard to do for some people. And especially if you don't have a coach or if you're not, if you're not able to accurately assess your own ego to the point where you can dial it back. Because, uh, I mean, we all, we train hard. We all pretty much have massive egos. Yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all fucked up in some way. I mean, we do this stuff. I mean, we push this hard. You're fucked up a little bit. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this ain't normal. Yeah. But yeah. the same token. So having to, having to have the self-awareness to know when to dial it back is hard for some people. And that was really difficult for me to get through. And that's why, you know, I have people who help me out with coaching because I can't coach myself. It's impossible. Yeah. What, what, what kind of coaching do you get now or what do your workouts look like now? Are they, are they a little bit I mean, more I still do powerlifting stuff? I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's like 80% weights at the most 75% weights. Usually, you know, I have a nutritionist. We keep my calories around 3000 a day which, you know, it's still a pretty good amount for my size, but I can burn it off pretty easily. You know, I do my own cardio. I do a lot of aerodyne shit, hell sprints. I mean, it's basically the same as I've always done. It's just uh, not quite as stupid. Yeah, yeah. 
That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's like a that's a slogan we should have like uh, under your name. You know, not quite as stupid. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, think about it, like because you know, like you got people all the time who are like I train myself, and you see them in an Instagram post like doing you know heavy singles, you know, three four times a month. I'm like, well, how is that really helping you? Yeah, yeah. It's actually right. killing, killing your joints. It's killing your joints over time. You know, I haven't done a heavy single. I don't know how long it's been. Christ, I couldn't even tell you how long it's been. Yeah, but without trying to mess around a little bit, you have no idea. You know, you got to, the internet's still newish with the uh, information on fitness. And 10 years ago, I read one thing and I'm like, oh, fuck it. The Bulgarians did it. I'm about to go do it. (laughs) Pull heavy, uh, heavy single every day. Fuck it. You know, like you, you, sadly, you got to learn. But like you said, I think self awareness is key. And if you read into yourself and, 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 can actually have, you know, an outside perspective and hopefully a coach you trust. I think that's a whole nother issue, you know, circling back to your gym and your facility is there's a billion coaches out there. But if you if you really trust your coach that they have your bet, not only the knowledge, but your best interest um, in, in, in hand, then hopefully you'll you'll end up doing OK. But how many coaches yeah. out there, you know, really want that? I don't know, sadly. That's a good question. Yeah, it means it's a, it's a tough industry because you got people out there who want to make money and they just give you a program and walk away. You know, I mean, the exact opposite of that. Of course, I can tell you that because I'm biased. I mean, you don't know that unless you hire me. But the truth of the matter is, I do my best to keep contact with my people. And I want that for my coach as well. Like if I email my coach, I want to reply within a day. You know, I mean, I, I get people replies fast. So I'm not expecting people to be like me. Yeah, yeah. I know people have lies. But if you don't reply to me within 12 to 24 hours, eh, probably something wrong. I mean, you got to maybe rethink your idea of being a coach. And unfortunately, a lot of people are like that. So I pretty much, when I want to hire somebody, I asked around and said, who's really good with communication, talking to you? Because most of us that are good all have the same basic knowledge. Mm-hmm. The communication part is the difference between quality and shit. Like actually listening to somebody and saying, okay, this ain't working for them. Let's fix this. Take their feedback and fix it. You know, hey, I got a problem. Okay, cool. Let's, let's work with this. You know, not like just, hey, just keep pushing hard, buddy. You'll get it. You know, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. 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 And like you said, the, the industry is a little weird. It's it's a lot of industries are, but it's it's highly unregulated. Yeah. Um, you know, there's yeah. some kind of certifications out there. And, and I've, I've talked to people that have CSCS2 and gotten mixed reviews on that. I don't have mine. Um, but like you said, like how you treat people, how you communicate with people, and then how you apply your own knowledge uh, is a key factor. And, and right now, I think, you know, all of this got so popular from 2013 to 2017, 18, that right now we're at like this peak melting pot of everyone wants to be a trainer and everyone mm-hmm. wants to be jacked and all this stuff. And then hopefully, you know, the cream will slowly rise at the top here over the next couple of years. Oh, well, not to mention the pandemic definitely weeds them out. Yeah, I, I think mean, so too. I mean, I'm not gonna, I mean, this what we're going through right now is tragically horrible for the country and it's economically, medically, everything. It's definitely a situation that is hard to deal with. However, the few downsides that we had from this you know, people getting in touch with themselves more, Yeah. you know, hanging with their families more, actually doing some fun shit besides going to a bar, you know, and uh, cooking for themselves. That's, that's a nice positive. The other positive is, too, is that the people who are in this for the money are getting weeded out. Yeah. Because you, you can make business, but you got to do it the right way. There's a lot of scumbags in business who will definitely rip people off just to make which we know about. And they're the ones, the ones who are hobbyists, the ones who are just in, like, oh, you know, I might want to be a trainer, so I'll look good. You know, they're getting weeded out because they have no idea. They're not hungry enough to stay successful. They, you know, they might do a part-time and have a day job. They might just uh, live at home with mom and dad and have a little bit of comfortable under the belt. They ain't the ones who are sitting there saying, this is, I'm going all in on this, it's all or nothing. And then when you have that sense of urgency about you and that the idea of like, this is my career, you're going to be a little bit more creative in dealing with people when something like this happens. Like right now, my business actually increased during the pandemic. I mean, that's, that's great. Beyond, I, it's all nutrition coaching. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that went up exponentially and I'm very, very grateful for that. But I also work to get to that point where I have a good name in the business and people trust me. So it wasn't like it wasn't inside me. I've been in this thing since 1998. So it's a long time. And somebody who's brand new to this, you know, they might not have that kind of worldly experience to have that kind of trust with somebody else. But that's just the way it's going to be. I mean, the internet can disguise a lot of shit from people that can make it, they can write really well, they can take great selfies, and they can basically lie to the people and saying, hey, you know, this is what I do, this is who I am. 
And you can craft words a certain way, make people believe in you, but the proof comes down to how you actually deliver the goods. You know, a lot of people, they write very well and they pay for business coaching, but they don't know how to go from point A to point B with a client. And that's where you see a lot of people dropping out at. Yeah, I think that um, so much of, of making money, period, is being like the most like uh, most logical suspect, you know, most likely person that you that someone thinks of or on the short list of things that people uh, people that hmm, on the short list of people that a consumer would think of for a particular yeah. service or product or whatever. Yeah. You say shoes. People think Nike or Adidas. Yeah, right. me, I don't because yeah, my yeah. feet are but really, whatever. I have Flintstone <laughs> yeah. feet, they're Something really wide. I never think head. of Nike. Yeah. But yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's New Balance or, or Asics, maybe those are my other yeah. options. I don't have a lot of options. I do, or, This is a total aside, but I, had to, I ordered slides the other day, and, I, and to get 4E, you got to go to New Balance, but they don't do half sizes. So my options were 9s, which my toes will hang over the edge of, or 10s, which are skis. So I'm skiing now uh, in my house. Comfy. So uh, th that actually feeds into uh, something I was going to say. Do you feel as though uh, your your in house client base here in the gym is going to grow um, when the doors open again to fill your new space? And there'll be a point at, soon, you know, the next couple of years, you're like, I got to be bigger again. Uh, of course, I hope not. I mean, I, <laughs> I do hope, but dude, moving a gym fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, been nice. Nice. it was probably one of the top five worst thing ever we did. That really sucked. <laughs> but I mean, we already got a bunch of new members that signed up waiting to start as soon as we opened. I mean, it was kind of remarkable. It was kind of fun. And it's kind of cool to see. So we have the capability. I mean, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, 12 squat racks. Wow. So, so we have a capability. What's that? You 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 just echoed echoed. You have a capability of of what? Oh, we have a capability of probably like twenty four people to thirty six people in the building at one time, so they can actually get all good work in. And our business model is set up in a such that that's if we have that many people per session per time, mm -hmm. dude, we're going to be a very well off. So it works. Now, in one way, we'll have to move is if we maybe have. 200 members and that would be kind of a nice problem to have you know, if we had that many members or our price point we'll probably end up buying a building yeah um what what modifications are you having to make or are there any that you're having to make relative to um covid oh yeah we made a ton i mean our city our mayor mayor quentin lucas has been very very transparent and very out about this and he's doing a fantastic job of communicating with local businesses through his press conferences. And, you know, he's definitely the right choice to lead the city through this, no doubt about it. And uh, he has a 10, 10, 10 rule, no more than 10 people in the building at a time or 10% capacity. And also the 10, the 10 rules, like if you, if you're in it for more than 10 minutes, you should write down your name, address and telephone number, or just so in case something happened, you mm. can contact trace. Okay. Now, I know certain people in the world will like contact trace in the form of government control, whatever, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> you know, but the way our business models run, all of our members anyway are on the system for Wattify. So they have to register for a time slot ahead of time. They uh, have okay. to. If you don't register, you can't come in. So they have to check in. If you don't check in, you gotta check in. I mean, that's just the way it's gotta be. So we're requiring mask at the gym. You know, obviously, masks are a hit or miss as far as transmission goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen the stuff on both sides of it. My main issue is people feel safer when people have masks on. And if you are sick but don't have symptoms, the mask will keep that shit in your, in your area, away from everybody else. So people keeping people safe is generally a good idea. So if you come into our gym and work out, you got to wear a mask. Now, if you're outside doing sprints, take it off. I don't give a shit. But if you're in a building, you got to wear a mask. Uh, we've had a claim. We have a policy from day one because my partner used to own a gym in Washington, D.C. Uh, everything you touch, we have to wipe down when you get done. We always have Clorox wipes. So when your bar is done, wipe the bar off. Wipe your dumbbells off. 
you know, wipe your bench off the horse wipe from away. So that hasn't changed at all. We've been that way since day one. I've never been in a gym that was like that. That's great. Yeah. 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 We, uh, we've been, we vacuum and mop like two times a week anyway, you know, so we always deep clean the place pretty often and people generally know the rules as far as cleanliness goes. The only thing we're really doing different now is the face mask and the capacity level. And we'll revisit that May 31st when the city evolves in the next phase, if they do. So we'll have to revisit that again. But we're taking it step by step as per city guidelines. And we're going to go with the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the man. That echoed that was again. Weird. That was weird. Yes, that <laughs> was super weird. I think we're, we're stuck in some kind of weird time loop. Uh, I think he, so. It's like... Uh, it's like a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you, oh my God, we were on a family zoom yesterday and the picture froze, Creepy. but the audio was still going, which was fine. You know, and I thought, all right, well, whatever. And then it started to catch up after like 10 minutes. And so it ran really fast <laughs> through everything until it caught up. I had no, no idea why it would do that or what would, why wouldn't it just jump to the, yeah, yeah. That's so weird. It's saving it. Um, they're watching. I actually saw a gym that it's in Reno um, that uh, had a video on this system that they're using to sanitize the gym. Like, I don't know if it's every day or every week or yeah. whatever. It's like a thing that comes through and like sprays everything yeah. down with, with yeah. stuff. Are you getting hit up with stuff like that as a gym owner? Yeah, I've got a bunch of phone call people and the price gouging is pretty stupid. Yeah. yeah I mean, we had, a, we had a guy who called me here locally about sanitizer and I'm like, how much is it? And he goes... Well, it's a hundred dollars a gallon. I'm like, yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, well, it's in demand right now. I'm like, dude, that's fucking price gouging, you fucking scumbag. Yeah. Right. So I hung up on him. And I then, think but I bought like a couple cases from a local liquor store who was selling it. It was like seven dollars for a fifth of eighty percent sanitizer. And I bought like two cases of that for people to use. I'm like, dude, 100 bucks a gallon? I'm like, you're out of your goddamn mind, dude. <laughs> that is insane. I saw somebody on Instagram. They had like a commercial grade looking fertilizer spray, and I think they hit it with sanitizer, and they owned a gym, and they're spraying the fucking <laughs> gym like they're painting the walls. It's amazing. I'm not yeah. surprised by that. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, Good I, idea. <laughs> actually, I mean, especially if you have bars and whatnot and like dumbbells every yeah, day. He was doing the dumbbells. Yeah. <laughs> Giving it, giving it once over. We a month or so ago, we bought a um, because my wife wanted a compost, so we bought a, a barrel composter, the kind you roll, you know, yeah. just made out of plastic, this big recycled plastic thing. Not even really that big, honestly. It was eighty five bucks, and we decided that because you have to like you do you do one and then you you seal it for a month. And that's how you get your stuff. So it's like, then you don't have anything else to put anything in. So it's like, okay, we'll get another one. I go to order one, another one yesterday. It was 200 bucks <laughs> from only one vendor, 200 bucks. Exactly the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, huh. yeah. Geez, 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 geez. a lot of profiteering going on out there. Yes, yeah, weird. Yeah, I mean, it's America. Online. It's a capitalism empire. People got to make money, I guess. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, Strike while the iron's hot and all of it. Like, have some ethics or whatever. Like, if it didn't cost yeah. you double the amount, then don't charge double the amount. I don't know. Yeah, I just blame parents. Shitty parents, <laughs> shitty kids with shitty morals. Just have a little ethics involved. I agree. My, speaking of parenting, I think my, my theory about uh, a lot of what we see in social media right now and, you know, protesting and all of this stuff right now is people, um, when they threw a hissy fit when they were kids, their parents gave them whatever it was that they were having a fit about yeah 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 and so yeah you cry until you get a fucking cookie. yeah so yeah. people people think that that that's the way to get what they want yeah it's true protesting is a different thing protesting is it supposed like, to be it's supposed to be a different it's supposed thing. to be a supposed thing. to be you know speech and it's a, a sure. creating awareness and all that kind sure. of stuff you know screaming doesn't create awareness but that's uh, other than the, there's somebody screaming uh, anyway yeah, an annoyance that's just my my small detour into politics what's your um capacity uh normally like what's what's an average day look like uh in and out of the gym and, and how did you know uh like when to expand well mid time and nighttime in the other gym when we had like 20 some people in 1500 square feet uh, during a session at that point we're like yeah we gotta expand because it gets to be too crammed and it was like, if we're gonna actually ever grow, we need to have a space that looks like an actual gym. This is like a former art studio, the other location. So it was kind of, 
kind of cramped, kind of like darkish. Mm. It wasn't very gym looking. This place, you pull up to it, looks like a fucking gym. I mean, it has, it has bay door, it got a parking lot. You know, you walk inside of it, it's like, it's just wide open, it's bright. You know, the walls are white. I mean, we got the flags hanging from the ceiling. I mean, it looks like a place that you can come and say, it's, it's, a, it's a training facility. Not just a warehouse gym. Yeah, yeah. Something that, that Mike and I have talked about offline quite a bit is the fact that, like, when the, that first impression is so strong. People are like, I, I, this is a place I want to be. And right. whatever it is that they're identifying with, whatever they're looking for, um, <laughs> it has to meet that or they're not going to join. And they're, or if they do join, they're not going to stick around. I mean, I can try to get the laptop around my desk here. Maybe you can see a little bit of the background <laughs> of it. Sure. Oh, yeah, nice. Hard. Yeah, yeah. Kind of hard. Kind of hard. Maybe kind of hard to tell, but I mean, obviously. Very clean look. How, um, you know, I, I think personality goes into a lot of business and, and obviously we talked about like how you interact with people, how you greet them, but I think, um, level of organization and how you deal with those kind of things. Um, some people are big numbers guys. Uh, I work with a guy, Omar Esau, and he just fucking loves numbers. I'm never looking at our sales. I'm never looking at analytics and this dude's just diving into them every day. Um, and luckily we balance each other with that, but I think every human, you know, is just naturally into one style of, of being productive. Productive. Some some powerlifting, right? Some guys like RPE. Some guys like percentage. Some guys uh, like to follow a program to the T. Some guys, you know, go off the whim a little bit. And and everybody makes progress, but it's just kind of which right. way you go. How much? How analytical are you? And like, are you are you calculating square foot per member, uh, square foot per barbell, square foot per <laughs> squat rack, et cetera, et cetera? Or are you more like, well, I've been in enough gyms in my fucking life, I can eyeball this thing. I'm an eyeball. I'm an eye. I'm a I'm a person guy. My partner, Sean, is a, an estate lawyer by trade. Hmm. He's very analytical, thank Christ, because I'm not. <laughs> you know, numbers and all that, he's good with. You know, he's good with finances. He's a tax guy. I'm, I get people in the door, and I'm a good coach. And I'm really good at communication. Not that Sean's not, don't get me wrong. But my also, I'm also, I'm really good with social media, and he fucking hates it. So... Social media is kind of a must in a business like this. Yeah. So I take on that responsibility for myself, and he does a lot of the coaching for his. Like, he does coaching as well, and he does all the number stuff. So him and you know him and uh, the other guys, join us, join us, join us, join us, join us, join us. He just did it again. <laughs> I know. I heard it. it was it was kind of cool. I, <laughs> yeah. I like that. It's a remix. Hey, join us, join us, join us. <laughs> like a YouTube mix. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying he does some coaching and then you're you have somebody that's yeah. moving or that yeah, moved you moved up here scott he joined us he closed his gym down and merged with ours and uh so he's you know they're both weightlifting coaches they kind of work together a little bit on like analyzing square foot mm -hmm. more sean and scott i'm like i don't give a fuck where it goes just make it look nice you know for me i just i'm not really a big like squat rack per square foot person i'm more like all right let's get it in get it done get our shit together yeah yeah so we can roll well um where can people find you and your your you and your gym and your uh nutrition coaching and just pretty much everything you have to offer the outward facing world well my website is easy uh i got two websites one's a business it's kcbarbell.com the other one is uh, jayashman.com, J-A-Y Ashman, A-S-H-M-A-N.com. Those are, you know, obviously one's a gym, one's personal. So you can find everything you need in those two places. And then all my social media garbage is somehow linked in pages too. So you can follow me on my selfies on Instagram. <laughs> yes, I know you, you, you do a number of those. <laughs> well, you know, people, people do a sell. I mean, I hate to yeah. say it. Yeah. I mean, you look a certain way, people are going to more like buy from you. That's a fact of fucking life. 100%. And it's, I, if, it's not always fair, but, you know, <laughs> life ain't fair. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. New podcast every Wednesday on every platform you want to. Find us. Give us a rating review. It helps a lot. I'm Silent Mike, 2Ks, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you want to find me. I am at the Jim McD and all the social medias. You can follow this show on Instagram. 50% facts where percent is a word and 50 is just numbers. And also the website is the same uh, pattern there. And we'll talk to you next week.